Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of this series. Today we're gonna continue with the snake lamp uh, modeling, so let's get to it. I need to preface this by saying that I was already recording <laughs> this part of the tutorial and I found a very catastrophic, uh, catastrophic mistake and I had to start over. So we're just gonna go from here. Um, I just created a layer here, saved most of the objects here, which are the like the visibility layers, uh, just to just to keep the the works in progress and focus only on what we need. So this area right here, this is a tricky area. It's a very tricky area. That's actually why I had to restart the the whole process because it's actually quite uh, interesting. We have holes on the top, which are gonna make it uh, a little bit tricky to do. But we already know that we have squares. We're gonna be able to very nicely create some holes in there. And then we have the entrance of the snake right here, which is a rather broad entrance. And we have these little windows on the sides. Those windows were the things that I did not notice when I was first recording this and uh, and had to, like, well, we need to start over right here. So um, since we have all of those, I decided that 24 sides to my, to my uh, element, to my, let me just go, there we go. I decided, I figured out that 24 sides to my cylinder is going to be the, the number that we need to create that sort of shape. So I'm going to start with a, an edge loop that I'm going to insert. Actually, I'm just going to grab the bottom parts of the face, control E, bring it down and extrude it out so that we hold the surface of the of the lamp, as you can see here or there on the, on the element. I'm going to extrude this out it's right about there and then the edge goes out and down like this. Now you can see there's a little bit of a curvature there as well. So I'm going to add one and two, the same trick that we've done before. Grab this guy's R and I'm going to press control and click on this uh, green uh, element and just like give it this sort of like a roundness going up. Now here's where the interesting part begins. In the last video where, where I was recording, I actually did the hat and everything on this area, but let's focus on the, on the holes right there. So if we take a look at the snake, you can see that the snake is gonna occupy four holes, all of these guys, to, to properly go into the thing. And you can see that the cut, let's go into Photoshop, actually goes right about there, right at, at, at this line. So I would say, I, I would say that this snake is a little bit too thick for what we want. It's probably gonna be slightly thinner. So, but, but the hole is, is definitely gonna be right there. And the outer part of the hole pretty much goes all the way to the top. So I'm gonna use my cut tool. I'm gonna cut a line right about, right about here. It's important that we take into consideration that, that this hole needs to come out on the other side so that, the, that the, the head can continue. So that's why I'm doing that. Now, now I'm just gonna grab all of these four faces, delete them, grab the four faces on the other side delete them as well and there we go that that's pretty much all we need to do uh for that particular part of the of the character because now when we press number three we're gonna get that very nice shape now i know right now we're getting this rounded edges but we know how to fix that's just a, a a support edge the tricky part though the tricky part it's the little window here this guy which is we can imagine is gonna be roughly at this height and it's gonna be right here on the on the side. Now the problem is that we actually don't have a side. Like we, we don't have a line that goes ex exactly through the side of the of the of the character here. So we're gonna do a little bit of a trick. First, let me turn this off. Um, I'm gonna delete half of this because I just want to work on half of it, and then we'll just mirror it to the other side. And I'm gonna use booleans. Booleans normally we don't use because they're not bad, but they're uh, not ideal. They, they leave very ugly topology. But if you know how to use them, you can actually get some very nice shapes. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to create a cylinder. And this is going to be an eight-sided cylinder. I'm going to rotate this cylinder around so that it's facing the side like this. I'm going to make it smaller. And now we need to give it that sort of like a U shape. Very easy. I'm just going to grab all of the vertex here flatten them out and then grab this guys and with the uh, V key I'm gonna snap them to the side like this so that we get a very nice effect now this guys we can just bring them up and there we go we have this very nice uh, shape that we're gonna use to cut through our geometry so we're gonna go here to the geometry and now we need to position it where I would expect this thing to go which if my calculations are correct should be about there Roughly there. 
And very important, I'm going to select this vertex and I'm going to snap them to the roof of this other elements. So they're matching that line perfectly. Here, they won't match. But over here, I do want them to match because that's going to help me quite a bit with the um, proper topology. Now, very simple. I'm just going to grab this guy, this guy. Let's do history first. So this guy, this guy, I'm going to say mesh, booleans, difference. And as you can see, we just cut this thing. Now, I don't need the whole thing. I just need the silhouette. So I'm going to delete all of these guys. And I'm actually going to delete the thickness as well because we don't need it just yet. There we go. And as you can see, we have this shape. Now, the only problem with this shape is that it's not, it, the topology is not working properly, right? Like, of course, if we do number three, this doesn't look half bad, but whatever it is, no, that's fine. Uh, but, but it's not working the way we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this vertex right here, and I'm going to snap it to this point right here. And then this one right here, snap it to this point right here, grab both of them, and I'm going to merge to center, grab both of them, merge to center. So that way, that vertex in particular, solve. No issue with that thing because it's it's going where we need to. Now, for this guy up here, or for this vertex right here, we need to find a solution. The cool thing about this is that most of the topology here is going to be hidden. So a very fast way in which we can uh, solve this is by actually just cutting like this. So from here to here. And then if you just need, just move this vertex there. Grab those, merge to center. Grab those, merge to center. So now that topology is solved. It's triangle and squares, which is completely fine. We can add support edges. No, no big deal. Everything is going to work uh, just fine. Now, same deal with this guy right here. Sorry. <coughs> I'm getting <coughs> my sneeze attacks again. Oh, my students uh, here in Mexico, they know about those. They make fun of me. <laughs> Give me just one second, guys. Well, sorry, I'm back. I just had one of those crazy sneeze attacks and uh, <laughs> I was felt like I was dying. Okay, so let's continue. As I mentioned, these guys, we're just snapping them so they're at the same distance as this vertex right here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go from here out. From here out. Now, why out and not in? Like, why not keep it there? Because when it smooths, I want things to smooth to the side so that we don't have uh, such a... Uh, such an intense position. So let's delete that. See how we get this very nice round edge. That's what I'm going for. Finally, I'm going to use my cut tool again. I'm going to create a new line. This vertex right here, we can delete. We don't actually need. Or another option is just go from here, snap it, and just snap it, let's say there. And then go from here, shift, click, snap it like there. And then grab this guys and this guys. R to snap them and V to, sorry, R to scale them and V to snap them. And there we go. So now that's also going to help, help me with the, with the holding of the edges and it's going to make sure everything works fine. So if we press number three, as you can see, we have this very nice round shape here. And now we only need to find a way to create the, the sharp lines on the, on the bottom and on the top, which again, it's going to be very, very easy. But before I do that though, uh, since we have thickness and that is very, very obvious here, we have some thickness here it might be easier to just create the thickness now than to wait until the the very end. So I'm going to select all of the faces here and all of the faces down here. I am going to mirror the objects first. So mirror on the negative X. There we go. You can see we have this very nice shape, hard surface-y thing. So those of you who wanted to learn hard surface, there you go. This is, this is how we do it. And I'm going to hit Control E to extrude, and I'm going to extrude it in. How much? Well, I think roughly this is the size that it has. So we're going to go there. I'm just going to say mesh display reverse. And there we go. Look at this. Very clean shape, very nice borders. Everything is, is nice and, and ready. Of course, if we press number three, the silhouette right now is not holding as we would expect. Careful there. We're just going to grab both of them and get them together. Make sure that everything is working there. Might want to give it another mirror just to make sure that both sides are working properly. Seems like the mirror is what's freaking it out. So let's just delete. Grab those two guys, merge to center. Grab those two guys, merge to center. And there we go. I always like pressing number three to make sure that everything is flowing and looking nice. Perfect. So now let's let's harden some of the edges that we have here. 
And uh, the first ones that I'm going to do is, is going to be this one, like on the inside here and here, here and here, here and here, and here and here. Press number three and see how nice that edge starts to hold. Very cool. Now to hold the horizontal edge, it's even easier. I'm just gonna use my cut tool, cut across, like really, really cr uh, close to the vertex, up and up. And we're gonna do the same here, like right there and right there. And it doesn't really matter that we're cutting the geometry that we just got here. There might be, I don't think, there shouldn't be angons. Square, square, triangle, square. Yeah, everything everything should be, should be fine. You might get a couple of uh, like those little things there uh, easy way to fix them is just like snap this guy here, grab those two guys and merge them together. See, so we are going to have a couple triangles. So grab this guy, snap it right there, grab those two guys and merge to center. And that should be working fine on the inside. I really don't care to be honest. Why? Because we're not even going to see it. Uh, I do care about this guys though. Like see that thing right there. It's a weird cut. It might have been due to the to the cut tool that we did. So we definitely do want to clean that up. Another thing we can do is try to erase it. Yeah, that works as well, as you can see. So we, we don't really need a support edge uh, back there. Now we can do here is another mirror. Uh, X negative world, apply. And uh, look at this. Should be working very nice. Now you can see here that, that we're still getting some like weird pinches like uh, on that area right there. Uh, we can't really add another support edge like here. That would definitely help hold the edge a little bit better, but the thing is it's gonna make the, the cylinder look a little bit flatter and we don't want that yet. So I'm gonna keep it like this and later on if we see that that's a, a big problem, we'll, we'll fix it. I actually think we could get rid of this one to be honest. Because there are, there are ways to, to create a harder edge on these areas without affecting the, the overall shape of the cylinder, which is what we, we should be going for. There we go. So let's continue now. I am going to go here, and as you can see, this might be a little bit too high. Or rather than it being too high, we have this thing, this like lip, the, the little hat that comes out of the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these elements, all of this vertex, bring them down. So they're really close to where they're cutting everything. And now I can very easily select this ring, which is a clean ring. It has no edge loops, no extra edge loops, no nothing. And I'm just going to start like working with this from here like that. So from this ring, I'm going to create a new edge loop right about here. Uh, probably a little bit smaller like that. I'm going to grab this faces and I'm going to extrude this guys out because this guys will help me build this little hat that we have. See, so all of the crazy things that we did with geometry and stuff, it's gonna be hidden. So that's why I'm not too worried about the, the whole thing. Now this little lip, as you can see here on the reference, we actually do get a little bit of a curvature and then this round thing. So I'm gonna grab this thing, extrude it out. <coughs> Sorry, uh, bring this out like this, and there we go. Now to round this off, we already know the, the drill, so I'm just gonna bevel. Uh, that looks very good. I'm just going to add one edge loop here to support the, the little edge. There we go. And now to create, uh, I can see that it's a little bit uh, concave like this. So we're going to insert like one and two edge loops. So like this, guys, uh, R, and scale them up like this. Probably move it up a little bit, scale them down. There we go. So we have this. Now I can see a little bit of a hard line there. Here, see that damage, that looks very cool. We're gonna be sculpting that later on. So we're gonna go there and there to, to create the, the sort of effect. And look at this beautiful thing. Now, as you can see, if we take a look at the whole thing, the snake is uh, going inside the, the element close to what we expect. Here, as I mentioned, I definitely think that this should be like thinner. So probably like this. And over here, we, I, I don't see it on the, on the concept, but we will definitely need to accommodate the curvature a little bit better. 
so that it flows and goes exactly how we how we need. I'm gonna take a closer look here. Yeah, because we are matching the curvature there, so unless unless there is a a change on the on the actual object itself, like on this like a uh, like little hat, which could be the way, but like it, there wouldn't be an issue if we were to like move a couple of the vertex out to to let the snake come out of it, or even leave it like this, just like uh, as if it, maybe they what's the word they welded it together and it's just the same the same object. We'll see later, but. So far, it looks it looks good. Like this shape looks good. Now on this bottom shape, though, I do want to add a little bit of a lip as well. I call it a lip. Let me know in the comments if that's the proper way to say this. Could be what, like a shelf, like a. I mean, it's a border, of course, but I'm not sure if I'm using the right word. There we go. So as you can see, that's gonna give me a little bit of detail there. We can, of course, add another edge up there. And that's it. Delete history, don't forget to delete history. That's gonna keep everything running. Let's save real quick. And you can see that everything is looking very good. Like we, we don't have uh, any extreme topology issues. Things are flowing nicely. The metal eventually is gonna look very nice with the textures and everything. So, so this shape's looking good. Now let's continue because <laughs> this is not over. You can see that from here we, we keep on going and we create like this new like surface. So for this one, I'm gonna use a little bit of a different technique. I'm gonna extrude this and I'm gonna bring it all the way till about, I would say there. And then uh, to create that little lip, I'm just, again, just gonna insert an edge loop right about here and right about here. This one seems to be a little bit thicker. Grab this, extrude out. <coughs> and move down. There we go. Same deal, round this off. Insert an edge loop here. Scale this edge loop down. Like this. This feels like one of the classes that I normally teach because it's a, it's a very complex object, which is really cool. Grab all of this, guys, R, and I'm just going to extrude this out to, to hit the proper uh, circumference. Let's grab all of this, guys. This is slightly bigger than the, than the one on the inside. Careful here. You can see how we're, we're pushing an edge that shouldn't be pushed. So let's just bring this guy in, which is the, the thickness. We've been, we've been bringing the thickness uh, throughout the whole thing, which, again, since this is a cinematic uh, prop, I, wouldn't, I don't mind. Like, I think it's a good thing to, to bring the, the, the piece out. But it's extra geometry, it's extra, extra texture space, extra a lot of things that we usually don't do in, in games and stuff. So just be mindful that all of these things, it will look very good, but it will be a little bit mm, suboptimal. Now I'm gonna grab this guys right here. Here's where the where the fun's gonna begin, or one of the tricky parts. I'm gonna extrude this out, bring this up, and scale in. Right about there. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna have to use my cut tool because we have we have thickness and we wanna modify both of them. So I'm gonna use my cut tool. I'm gonna cut right about here. <clears throat> right about there. One about there and one about there. And then we're gonna grab all of those and we're gonna bring them in to create the sort of like curvature that we have right there. And then I'm gonna grab all of those guys, bring them in again. This guys are probably gonna go a little bit higher because these guys are gonna be super important. These are the squares that we're gonna be uh, perforating to create the, the shape that we want. Now, this guy's right here. I can extrude out. I'm gonna use R and just extrude with my R key. And then this guy, just extrude out like this. Grab all of these things, bring it in. Make it smaller, that's gonna keep it round. There we go. So it's gonna give me that round shape that we have there. It, it seems bigger on the, on the concept. So I'm gonna start bringing this in. So one more line there and extrude it out and down. 
give it the the sort of round shape that we're visualizing there there we go that's way closer <coughs> sorry um feels like i'm catching something like the flu or something it's not COVID. i got my vaccine hopefully you guys have gotten your vaccines as well we're not gonna get political okay so don't comment about vaccines just mention let's do a bevel here as you can see we're not doing the bevel on the inside because again we don't want extra geometry on the inside we just want to like create this sort of like round shape here and look at this very very nice looking uh thing here I do think this thing on the bottom part, it's a little bit flat. So let's get it out a little bit more. And there we go. That's a, that's a very, very clean shape. Uh, I do feel like there is an extra line there that I really don't want or like, which is this one right here. But it's part of the support edges, so we can't just eliminate it. Um, I'm expecting the texture to help us a little bit there to, to hide that uh, sort of thing. Because otherwise, things are going to look slightly weird. Now, for the fun part, the holes up here. Uh, now, the cool thing about these holes, as you can see, they're not perfectly circular. They're they're circular-ish. So, so we can get away with, with a couple of tricks. So I'm going to just grab this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. And just delete. And that's the inner one, so let's just delete that one as well. We can just <coughs> grab this four guys. Uh, delete. And I believe it's this four guys. And delete. There we go. And uh, on the side here, they're pretty close together. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I think we can do two and then cut this two. And then two, cut this two, yeah. Careful there, don't grab more than you should. There we go. There we go. Um, if this happens, you can just bridge and work from there. I mean, here, another quick thing is just mirror it. Wait, 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 wait. I messed up. <laughs> I messed up. I didn't grab the two frontal ones. I grabbed the two side ones. So let's see if we can go back. There we go. So let's go to the front view. Should be easier to just grab this four guys. There we go. And then let's go to the right view. And I know it was two and it's this two and this two. There we go. So now we have the, the proper holes. Grab all of them. Breach. G to repeat the last action. G to repeat the last action. G. And G. One more. And I think that's it. And then we press number three. We're going to get this. Now, they look like squares, which is now what we're going for, right? So I'm going to show you one more thing that we can do here to get this to look uh, very round. There is one particularly good tool inside of uh, Maya, which is called the Circularize tool. I'm going to give it a shot and see if it works uh, for this uh, thing. So I'm going to go Edit Mesh and try Circularize. Uh, it is kind of working. Let's try doing a little bit of a twist or a radial offset. No. Because it is kind of doing what I'm expecting it to do. But as you can see, it's, it's kind of like crunching everything. So we're going to have to do it old school. And the way we do it old school is you basically grab these things and manually shape them to look like a, like a circle. So, again, I'm not too worried about these things looking perfectly circular. But I do want them to look very nice. Uh, I should probably do... Do we have... We have symmetry, right? like back symmetry yeah we have symmetry so so we should be able to to create a symmetry here so now you press number three as you can see this the circle holds a better shape closer to what we have over there now of course we're going to have to or we're going to need a support edge here and here and that's going to keep the thickness of the circle closer to what we we would expect look at that 
very nice. This is also going to give it this very natural, like, handmade thing. This was not made by a machine. It was made by, by some artisan, right, that created this lamp. So so that's the kind of thing that we're, that we're going for. Now, um, we need to repeat that. But in this one, this one's going to be a little bit trickier because it's, it's actually off-axis. So we're going to have to be very careful in how we... How we move things gonna be a little bit more organic, but that's fine. Because there's no particular like edge we can like assign to, but that's fine. We're gonna get this sort of shape. It's gonna look nice. So let's do this and this. There we go. And that's our round shape there. No weird pinches or anything going anywhere else, which is exactly what we're we're trying to get. Like we, we don't want any weird uh, weird stuff to happen here. Uh, so now we're just going to mirror and I'm going to mirror to the, um, where's my mirror tool? There we go to the negative Y. So now we have this exact same one and then we're going to mirror to the negative C and we should have the exact same thing over here, uh, with the holes and everything, everything should be perfectly symmetrical. So this has symmetry, but it's uh, a two way symmetry. We can't do it in just one go. We need to do two, two double symmetries. Look at that. That looks amazing. Like that soft surface there, that's going to give us some very, very nice, uh, interesting shadows later on. So now we just need to finish this piece. Uh, we're almost going to hit our 30 minute mark, which is, which is good. It's roughly what we usually take. Well, remember the first videos, let me know in the comments. Did you guys like the, the first videos where things were like, an hour long, or, or do you prefer this sort of like a shorter, shorter version? So here I'm going to add a knife tool just to cut this edge loop. I'm going to select this guy because I, I, I do want to have an interface there, interface there to hold the edge. And then this guy right here, I am going to control E to extrude it and just create like a cap similar to what we did on the, on the bottom side here. So this cap is going to say mesh, uh, fill hole. And then I'm going to select that face and I'm going to say edit mesh, poke, which is going to just create a pole. And then I'm going to grab this guy right here, do the same thing, mesh, fill hole, face, edit mesh, poke. There we go. I'm going to give this thing a little bit more, um, I'm going to create a, an edge loop here just to hold it. And then I'm going to, grab this guy and just bring it up a little bit. So we create this sort of like a round shape there. We can add one more support edge. And let's say one more there. Just to just to have something there like a like a cap, right? Which is exactly this. And there we go. We have uh, the top side, the bottom side, like the bottom uh, section here, the glass, which uh, we need to do a couple of changes here as well. It's not going to go all the way over here. It's going to be like a, like a hollow uh, cylinder. Uh, we need to do the snakes, uh, but let's, let's finish. Let, let's just finish and wrap this up with the little hooks here, which we already have. It's just a matter of giving them a little bit more life, which is this guy's right here. So uh, this one, which is the first ring, I just want to make it look a little bit more like handmade. So I am going to, uh, uh, we still have radius. Perfect. So I'm going to make it slightly thicker. And of course, we don't want this thing to go all the way down. So I'm just going to erase all of those guys like this. Grab the vertex here and bring this down. So it intersects with the, with the rest of the lamp. And when we press number three, that's going to, it's going to hold perfectly. Now this one right here, here, here's the tricky part. Here's what we need to say. Okay. Do we want to model everything as is in the real life or do we want to like change it a little bit? I think I want to, I want to keep this one since it's bigger. I want to keep it symmetrical, like just like that. And, and therefore this one, we need to change it a little bit. So I'm going to show you one, one quick way to do that. It's, I'm just going to go into my deformer tab and I'm going to use a lattice. Now the lattice, as you can see, it's going to create a box around the object. I'm going to change the divisions on the S the axis here to uh, five. So we have one in the middle, one here, one here. <clears throat> And all the other ones is going to be one because we pretty much just want to modify this lattice points and move this thing around. So I'm going to grab all of these things and I'm going to move them a little bit to the, to the back. So I'm going to go top view just to see a rough estimation. And then this ones, I'm going to move them to the front. And then this ones, I'm going to move them closer to the center. And this ones like this. 
So as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm just deforming this whole thing in such a way that we create something a little bit more interesting. Now I can grab everything and I believe I can extend this out like this. And as you can see, we're going to be able to create this sort of like a transition. I'll probably grab this guys and just push it a little bit more. There we go. Because what we're, what we're going to do finally for this piece is I'm just going to make it so that it holds that thing very close to the to the general area. Now we can like at this point it's a little bit too far out. We can bring them in. And once you're done, you just do the history. Now this, of course, is going to look like a very organic thing, uh, but I think it, it helps and it it looks good with the with the overall shape. Uh, now this one, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm probably going to add some sort of like handle up here, which we don't see on the concept. But if you take a look at the at the oil lamp. Most of them had like some sort of handle where you would either like grab it or, or place it somewhere. Um, and I'm thinking about just to give it a little bit of variance, adding like a wood handle. I think it might look nice. Later on, if we don't like it, we can get rid of it. I mean, I don't see any, actually don't see any um, a reference that might have a wood handle. So if you don't see it, it's probably because it's not there. <laughs> So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right here and right here, grab this guys, just bring them up and then grab this guys, bring them up, grab this guys, bring them in. And that way, when we do number three, we get this very nice uh, shape. I do think things are getting a little bit um, thin over here. So I'm going to make them bigger. There we go. And now just to make sure this is mirror, I'm just going to mirror. And, uh, and now this is going to look very nice. So let's do a final cleanup pass uh, before we, we wrap up this video. And uh, it's just a matter of grabbing all of the objects, deleting the history, and renaming properly. So let's call this lamp handle. Let's call this lamp top. This is going to be lamp base. Uh, let's call this glass, even though we're going to be modifying it. And that's it, because everything else is, is still not done. So so there we go, guys. This is this is the, the result for this second part. So make sure if you're following along to get all the way to this point. And in the next part, we're going to start with the buttons here, like all of the like little things that we have down here. And then uh, we're going to move on to the snakes, which we will probably start here and finish in ZBrush to get the, the very nice shape. So hang on tight, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.